everybody, I'm really excited to welcome Lindsay back to HGMM. Everybody, she's going to be showing us how to paint a really cool, totally doable work of art. If you think you aren't creative or artistic, Lindsay's tutorials will inspire you to pick up a paintbrush and start making art. You can do these paintings. And please don't forget to subscribe to Lindsay's channel, The Frugal Crafter, for lots more painting and crafting tutorials. Hi there, I'm Lindsay from The Frugal Crafter and today on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals I'm going to show you how to make this adorable painted slate that you can hang on your front door and it's perfect for Halloween time. Let's go down to the studio and I'll show you how it's done. I'm working on a piece of slate that was rescued from a demolition site and you can buy this slate at craft stores but if you're lucky to see an old building being knocked down you can often just grab a few of these for free they're just looking to get rid of them and they're a wonderful surface for home decor. I'm going to start off by sealing the slate because if I don't it's going to make me use a lot more paint than I need to because it's going to just kind of soak it up and it's going to be um, really frustrating to paint on. I'm using a Minwax polycrylic matte acrylic varnish for this. Um, you can find that in any home improvement store. You can actually use any sort of acrylic sealer that you have. Just give it a, a thin coat and let it dry and you'll be all set to start painting. Once this is dry to the touch, you can squeeze out the paints you're going to paint with. I am using a warm yellow, a crimson red, a violet, black, and white. We're going to start off with our yellow. And you might need more paint than what I've squeezed out, but it's better to start with less and then, um, and then squeeze it out as you need it so you don't end up wasting. If your paint seems like it's dragging quite a bit, you can moisten your brush with a little bit of water and get it to a nice kind of creamy consistency. You don't want to add so much water that it is um, transparent though. You want to make sure that your paint is covering the slate. You can paint all the way to the edge, but I like to leave kind of like a rough border there. So we're gonna bring up this yellow about um, a third of the way. And then we're gonna mix in some red. Again, moisten your brush if you need to. Your bristle, your bristles should stick together, but we don't want to we don't want to make our paint too watery. So we still want it to be uh, to be bright. And if you find that it gets too watery, you can always add a little bit more paint after this dries. If you go on top of it while it's still wet, though, it will probably lift the paint underneath. Once it starts to dry, um, it'll tend to lift. I can add a little bit more yellow at this point though and blend it in because everything is uniformly wet. And if I'm gonna go in with this brush that has red on, my, red on it already, I'll just pick it up and add it where the two colors merge. Now if I didn't seal my uh, slate beforehand, I would have a, um, a really draggy mess. It would just look really um, kind of skippy. It would you'd see the the slate through, and it would just be um, be a really messy look. What you're going for is a nice smooth blend. And then I'm going to clean the same brush because I really like these oval washes. It's like a flat brush, but the but the bristles come to an oval at the top. Really like those for uh, painting blended backgrounds. Now I'm just going to pick up this violet color, start it right at the top because if I get it into the yellow, it's going to make mud. So I just kind of want it to overlap the red a little bit where, where it meets, just like that. Can work them together a little bit, but I don't want it to get too murky looking. Now, if you notice you have any uh, rough spots at this, at this stage, I'm going to tip it so you can see. I can go over it with a fluffy brush to smooth it out. A soft brush like this can be used to take out any brush strokes because it's not so rough that it's going to lift the paint. It's just going to soften everything out. This is called a mop brush. You can see there it's fairly smooth. This is good enough for now. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back in and paint on some pumpkins. Now we're going to add the silhouette of some pumpkins. So I'm going to start with maybe a mama pumpkin. I'm going to, or a daddy pumpkin. I'm going to make a nice big circle with a dent on the top there. I'm just drawing this in with a round brush and I think I'll put um, I'll put two more pumpkins so do a small one in the middle and maybe a tall skinny one over here nothing fancy always draw it a little bit smaller than you think you want it that way if you have to fatten it up um, it's no big deal and these are going to need some stems, so I'm going to go ahead and do that 
with this brush. And then we'll switch to a bigger brush to fill in the rest of the shapes here. So I'm going to go with a half inch flat. You can moisten your brush with a little bit of water. Not too much though. You don't want to make this transparent and go ahead and fill in each of the pumpkins. While you're at it, you also want to fill in the uh, bottom of the um, slate with some black paint. We don't want just that plain gray showing because it is going to look a little funny and just kind of pull up some choppy marks to maybe send a, signify that it's in a pumpkin patch and there's some hay. You want it kind of rough though because we've got a very rough border around here so we just want to um, stay with that. And then I want to put some vines in here because I think that will really um, enhance the look of this. It will give it a little bit of flair. So what I'm using here is a liner brush and this is a number four liner and the difference between a liner and a round is that you have longer bristles so I'll be able to um, to make longer strokes. So what I'm doing is adding a little bit of water into my acrylic paint so it's kind of the consistency of like a whole milk or cream and hopefully that's thin enough. I'm going to twirl my brush in my paint to give it um, a nice uh, a nice point and then I am just gonna kind of make some little swirls. Now you could put lettering on with a liner brush too if you wanted to put like Happy Halloween or Happy Fall. Um, that's completely up to you. You could also use a marker like a chalk marker to do that. You won't be able to wipe it off very easily I will warn you because I have used chalk markers on painted slate before and painted chalkboards and they do tend to want to be a little more permanent or at least leave a ghosty stain so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and if you want to paint on a few leaves you could do that as well. I would do something simple like maybe just a little uh, just a couple little leaves like that. Um, nothing too fancy because you're we're working kind of small here so details really aren't going to show up too well. If you do want to put a few little um, few little leaves on there. I had another idea. I actually thought maybe a few bats in the sky would be uh, cool if you didn't want to put in uh, lettering. So what I'm going to do is just make a big like V, kind of like I was doing um, like a typical bird in a painting. But then what I'm going to do is actually put two points for ears, a little circle for a body, and then I'm just going to make the scalloped wings there. Very easy when you break it down into simple shapes. Do one a little bit lower so it'll be easier to see. So we're going to start off with our kind of regular V bird and then we're going to put two pointy ears and a little circle for the body. And then we're going to do our little scallops. So it's kind of like a reverse scallop shape there. Do that on the other wing. And then I would just put one more in there because things look better in an uh, odd number when you have fewer than five. You can either use a small flat brush or a round brush to put the features in on your pumpkin. And a probably a combination of both will work the best. So what I'm going to do is mix a little bit of white with that same yellow I used in the sky so it will be nice and opaque. Now if your paint is not opaque enough you can paint everything white, let it dry and then go and paint it with uh, yellow afterwards. And I'm going to start with this guy over here just giving uh, him or her two round eyes. I'm going to Give it a nice big smile. Bring it down the sides and then I think I'll switch over to the flat brush to put the teeth in. So we're not adding water to our brush because we need this paint to be fairly thick when we do this. So I'm basically just painting around where I'm going to want the teeth. And I'll just touch it up with my uh, with my round brush. Now you can go back in with um, with black afterwards if you go if you get it a little too big. So don't freak out about it. I wouldn't try um, 
to wipe it off with like a q-tip or anything because you might actually lift up the paint underneath because we're just letting this kind of dry to the touch in between so you want to go ahead and put a face on each of your pumpkins if you need to add in a second coat after you've painted that first coat of yellow on you can go ahead if not just go back in with black if you need to and touch up any areas that need a little bit sh of sharpening um, you can add teeth if you forgot to add teeth or if your teeth didn't come out big enough like if I want to make this one a little bit bigger I can go in and do that I could put um, eyes I could put like pupils in the eyes just make sure well actually I mean it's your pumpkin you can do what you want but you can make sure it's like attached to something so that it has a little bit more of a uh, of a realistic look to it but again that's completely up to you as long as your paint's dry underneath you'll be able to uh, layer it without lifting it and then once this is all dry you simply want to give it another coat of your matte sealer to protect it and then I'm simply going to use a little bit of jute through the holes and this, these would be like the nail holes where they would be attached to a roof um, I'm going to use a little jute through the holes I might add some bows with some ribbon I'll see what I think and um, that will pretty much finish it up and it'll be all set to hang on my front door for the month of October I hope you enjoyed this video today and if so please check out my channel The Frugal Crafter where I have lots of craft and painting tutorials for you every day and they're all free so I'd love it if you subscribe to me over there I want to thank you so much for watching and please check out all the other videos on the Home and Garden for Mere Mortals channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Heather from Diving Head First and today on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals I'm going to show you five different ways to decorate pumpkins without carving them, either using a real pumpkin or a craft pumpkin. So let's get started.